We will now have our opening hymn, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow, more thorns infest the ground. Be roar him, make the blessings flow, and far as the curse found, as far a curse is found, far as far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. Uh, are there any announcements? Okay, let us begin with our call to worship then. From the stillness of the blessed night of Jesus' birth. We come before you, O God, in praise and thanksgiving. From the astounding news sung to the shepherds. Let our hearts keep the joy and peace of Christmas always. Fill us with your love, O God. Pour your peace upon us that we may be bearers of your good news. Amen. Morning, everybody. Uh, we're taking time for our joys and concerns this morning. Are there any? Uh, I wanted to ask Barb, how is uh, Laura doing? Pastor Laura. Did she ever get results from her test? It was positive. <clears throat> okay right yeah I saw her she she was in a bad way last week <clears throat> are there any others that's right Carla's mother uh, is doing very poorly uh, so please keep her and her father in your prayers the whole family um, any others? If not, then let us pray. Loving God, we have been touched by the joy of Christmas. You have filled us once again with the joy of living and the spirit of giving. Your promises have been fulfilled through the coming of the child, Emmanuel. Jesus was born of the flesh that we might be born of the Spirit. May we be faithful to our birthright as we praise you for all you have done for us. You have shown us mercy through an abundance of steadfast love. You have saved us from trial and distress and brought us new hope and new life. How comfortable and complacent we become as we bask in your glib gift of this child. We want to sit beside the manger and linger a while, but the message of Christmas, O God of love, 
is a message of moving on. The donkey awaits to carry us on a journey, a journey into uncertainty. Just as you meet us in the familiar places, so too do you call us out to faraway places for our safety and our growth. Help us to trust in your abiding love and to not turn away from any of the possibilities you have in store for us. For you will see us through our times of suffering and affliction. In response to your faithfulness, your kindness and mercy, we lift our prayers this morning. For all those who are refugees who are pulled away from the safety and security of their home. For the poor in substance and spirit and for all those who are without hope. We lift prayers for those who suffer from illness of any kind and loss of any kind. For those who must face the future with the loss of a loved one and for those who see your presence in a time of trial. We lift prayers for ourselves that we might meet the hard decisions and difficult challenges, seeking first your guidance and your will for our lives. May we be led to new places of openness, receptivity, and love toward all the people who touch our lives. And may we receive the gift of your vision that sees beyond what the world is and reaches out always to what we can become. Now let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we will have our second hymn, Star Child. Star child, earth child, go between of God. Love child, Christ child, heaven's lightning rod. This year, this year, let the day arise when Christmas comes for everyone everyone alive street child be child no place left to go hurt child used child no one wants to know this year this year to the day arrive when christmas comes for everyone everyone alive grown child old child memory full of years sad child a lost child story told in tears this year this year let the day arrive when christmas comes to everyone everyone alive spread child spoiled child having wanting more wise child faith child knowing joy in store this year this year let the day arrive when christmas comes for everyone everyone alive hope for peace child god's stupendous sign down to earth child star of stars that shine this year this year 
Let the day arise when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of the righteous, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up former devastations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines, but you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you will, shall glory. Because their shame was double and dishonors, you proclaimed as their lot. Therefore, they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy be theirs." For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give you them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people of whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Our gospel reading comes from the book of Luke, the second chapter. Please stand. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looked forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit it rested upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was his customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you have dismissed your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people of Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be oppressed. So shall there, the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul or two. There were also a prophet, Annas, the daughter of Phanel, of the tribe of Asher. She was to be she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow of the age of 84, 
She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. And at that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and favor of God was upon him. This is the reading of the word for, of God, for the people of God. You may be seated. During the season of Advent and Christmas, we hear a lot about the words fulfillment and light and peace. And we hear about them again in our readings today from the Bible. In the first reading, we hear about the promise of God to send someone who is going to proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted and to release the captives and set them free, and to bring about the fulfillment of God's promises on earth. And in the second reading, we hear about Simeon and Anna. We see Joseph and Mary taking their baby boy Jesus to the temple to be dedicated to God. All firstborn males were to be dedicated to God, and most people dedicated all their male children to God, but specifically the first. So here we have Joseph and Mary going to the temple after everything that they've been through. Just think about it. They were planning to get married, um, and I guess to have a long engagement which was customary then, and to make all the preparations for their wedding when they find out they're going to have a baby. And they even know what the baby's name is. They're visited by angels. Then there's a census being taken. They have to get on the road <clears throat> and leave far from home and go to where the census will be taken because they have to go back to the town where they're from. So they go back there. They are visited by wise men and by shepherds. <clears throat> Hear about the angels again. What else? They're probably thinking that now at last is a time for them to settle down and just bask in some sense of normalcy in their lives. They've really had nothing normal for some time now. <clears throat> so they bring Jesus to the temple to be dedicated. And lo and behold, there's more drama when they get to the temple. The man Simeon, who has the Holy Spirit placed upon him and who is very devout, sees the baby Jesus because he's led by the Spirit to go to the temple. He sees Jesus and he recognizes who Jesus is. And he comes up to talk to Mary and Joseph. And he sees the baby and he holds Jesus and he says that now, Lord, your servant, can go in peace because I've seen the fulfillment of your promises. You've made promises to, the, to us, and now I'm standing here holding the fulfillment of that promise. And then he speaks to Mary and Joseph, and he says, your child is a very special child, and he will be <clears throat> instrumental in the lives of many for their rising and their falling. And before it gets better, although he's come as the fulfillment of God's promises, before it gets better, there will be hard times, just as there are 
with anything good in our lives. It will be challenging to both of them. I can only imagine what they must have been thinking at that moment. They've already been through so much, and now here they have this man who's been touched and moved by the Holy Spirit to come and tell them about their child. And even Anna blesses this child and sings when she sees him. And Simeon is ready to retire, to retire from life, because he has seen the fulfillment that God has promised. The people had been searching for a light at the end of the tunnel. <clears throat> the story of the ancient Israelites is one of slavery and bondage and being um, overtaken by other countries, being taken into exile, places where they didn't want to live, more than once, where they did not have a temple to worship in, and so the people have been longing to come back together, to be a people, a people of believers, a community of faith, a nation of faith. And now, in Jesus' day, they are back in their own country. They have a temple to go to. <clears throat> they are together. They are not technically under slavery, or captivity, but they are under the watchful eye of the Roman Empire. So although they are in their own country uh, with their own rules and their own leaders from their faith, everything they do is under the watchful eye of the Romans, and at any time that the Romans don't like what they are doing, they can stop make it stop, and they have the power to um, allow or not allow these Jews to worship as they feel they need to and to um, follow all the rules of their law, which, of course, the Romans think is quite strange and has nothing to do with their laws, but they're willing to tolerate it for the sake of peace only so far as it goes, as that goes. So the people have been looking for a light at the end of the tunnel when God will finally be revealed to all the nations. And they know that God has promised to them through Isaiah and through many others, that God has made a promise that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. There will be a fulfillment. There will be peace at last for them. <clears throat> that ultimate peace. When God finally fulfills the promises that he has made to the people of ancient Israel. And I would say... People today in our country, in our world, are looking for the same thing. Looking for some sense of peace, some sense of light at the end of the tunnel, some sense of fulfillment that what we've been through has come to an end. Because I think it's safe to say that probably for just about everybody in the world, this has been a very difficult year. We've had a worldwide pandemic, which has just really wreaked havoc on everyone's life, everywhere. Some people have not lived through the pandemic. Many people have lost loved ones. Many people have had the virus themselves, and they will live with the effects of that for the rest of their lives. There are people who have lost their jobs who will continue to lose their jobs. There are people who can't wait to get back to work and can't. Children who have 
lost almost technically a year of being in school. You know, that bell curve, I mean, if you were this part on through the bell curve, you're going to do all right. And if you're on this part of the bell curve, this way, it, you may not ever catch up with your education. We know people have been in dire straits, needing help with food. They're facing possible eviction and foreclosure on their homes. So it has been a tough year for everybody, but I think especially for our country. And why would that be? I think because we've had so much freedom and liberty to do whatever we've wanted, and we've had a really good standard of living. Probably the best in the world, I would say, as far as standard of living. Now, quality of life, which is something different, arguable, where you would get the best quality of life, but I believe we have a good quality of life as well, as a very high standard of living. As a matter of fact, people all over the world look to the U.S. as the place where everybody wants to be, right? Our culture is the one that seems to be the exciting one that people like to see for fashion and music and whatever else that you can think of in our um, culture, especially through the media. We're the ones that brought out Facebook, and Twitter, and all those Google, all those other things where people can now see even more about how other people live in the world, and people want to come to America. That, that's the place to be. You know, our son lived in China for four years, and uh, people there love people from the West, but especially from America. And so our son was working over there, and he talked about how he knew he was always being watched wherever he went because they just have a fascination with Americans. And so he said when he would go to have lunch at his job and he'd go in the cafeteria and get his food and sit down, he said when he first went in, everybody would be talking a mile a minute and there'd be so much noise, so many people talking rapidly, and he can speak Chinese. But then he said when he sat down, he could notice it was almost quiet in there because they all wanted to see how, whether he was going to eat with chopsticks or how he was going to eat his food, and was, it, was he going to be eating Chinese food there? He said he got tired of it after a while, being so different and everybody watching everything. He said he was walking down the hall one day, and a Chinese man ran up and pulled at the hair on his arm, because Chinese men don't have the same kind of hair on their arms that men over here do. So he did get tired of it, but they love Americans over there. They want to learn to speak English with an American accent. They would regularly ask our son, can I walk with you and practice my English with you, especially the younger ones. And they would come up and ask, can I have my picture taken with you? Believe it or not, we were out uh, walking around doing some sightseeing and a woman backed into Ron and she stood there and put her phone up and took a selfie so that she could get him in the picture. I don't know, Ron was thinking maybe she should have asked his permission, but she was gone in a flash, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of people over there. But people want, wanted to come here, and so I think that's why we had such a hard time in this country, because we're used to going where we want, getting what we want, buying what we want. Um, our roads are so much better than they are in other countries. 
you know, gasoline, which they call petrol over there, is a lot cheaper here. We're used to just getting on the road and going wherever we want. We haven't been used to wearing a mask on our face. I don't know about you, but there's been times when I've gotten out of my car, completely forgotten, gone up to the door of the store, see the sign, and had to go back to the car and get my mask and go back up, even though they have those crummy ones there <laughs> that they'll let you have for free. So that's why I think it's been particularly hard for us. And then, of course, how many people have we lost? Our hospitals have been and are being overrun. People, a lot of people have lost their health insurance. Um, they've lost loved ones. And just every day, it seems we hear that it's the deadliest day since it began. So I think it's safe to say that even here in our country and all around the world, we too have been looking for the fulfillment of the promises of God, light at the end of the tunnel. And now we do have some light at the end of the tunnel, don't we? We have that vaccine out there, and perhaps more than one will be effective, possibly even three. And for many people, they think it's wonderful that these mortal scientists have come up with these vaccines to save us, but we know that they have just discovered what God has had there for them to discover all along. But it's light at the end of the tunnel, and we'll take it. Something to show that the promises of God are coming to fruition in this world. And for those of us who have faith, when times are tough like that, we have our faith to get us through. And what is faith? Believing in what we can't see. Even when we can't see that light at the end of the tunnel, we're always seeing a light at the end of the tunnel in our souls, aren't we? We always, through faith, believe that God will be faithful to God's promises to us. We know those promises to us. To be with us through anything we go through and to trust that God will bring us to where we're meant to be and that God means good things for us. God wants good things for us, for all of us, all around the world. But there are so many people around the world and in our own country who don't have that gift of faith. They believe in what they can see and touch and hear and smell and taste and know with their five senses, and that's about it. And, you know, if that's what you believe, it's all fine and good, but it's a pretty sad thing when times are going really hard and you're looking to yourself and to other mortals to save you from what is happening. And that's where we come in because those promises of God, they're not just for us. Those promises of peace and fulfillment and light, they're meant to be for everybody in the world. And they're meant to be offered to everybody in the world. And that's where we come in with helping people to see the promises of God, to know the promises of God, to point them in the direction of God, to actually know God, or to be pointed in the direction where they can find out and that they have free will to make a choice on their own, to believe what they see and what they hear about God. But for those of us who have the gift of faith, we know that God's promise has been fulfilled. Jesus has fulfilled that promise and that Jesus had come into the world for every single person. Every single person, no matter who they are, what they are, what they may have done in their life, whether they will ever believe in him or not. 
in order to help them be the people that God has created them to be. And we are the ones to help those others. So many people suffering who will never darken the doorstep of a church, never seek to come in, and maybe just need to hear the word spoken in just the way that we might be the ones to speak it. Take that message out with you into all the world. Amen. And now this is the time where we would normally collect our tithes, gifts, and offerings for the Lord. But because of COVID, we can't do that. But in the narthex, we do have two plates. One is for your donation for the church. The other is for a donation uh, for the Agape House. If you are joining us online, there is a place at the bottom of your screen where you can see how you also may donate. And you may also send it into the church if you would rather. Uh, and so now I would ask Darren if he would please play our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And now please join in the prayer of dedication, which is in your bulletin. God of hope and joy, the gifts we offer to you pale when our minds try to grasp all we have been given in this season. Wholeness in our woundedness, hope in our despair, peace in our turmoil, forgiveness in our rebellion. Like Simeon, our eyes have seen your salvation, and you give us light in our darkness. Help us embrace your extravagant generosity as we give ourselves to others. In our Savior's holy name, we pray, amen. And now we will have our closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching o'er tyrant flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a lonely light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds heard and trembled when low above the earth Ring out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Receive the blessing. Go now in love and peace, realizing that God has fulfilled his promises to us. 
by the person and the birth of Jesus Christ. Take that message out with you into all the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.